Good evening, everyone. Carice Jackman with Eyewitness News. We are here having an open and honest, uh, candid discussion about New Orleans East. Um, if you've been watching our coverage all this week, we've been talking about uh, our series called The Forgotten East, uh, trying to highlight different issues going on in New Orleans East, um, whether it's blight, uh, abandoned properties, um, sections of crime, and just people trying to look forward for a brighter future for New Orleans East. So we're highlighting all of that um, as best as we can, and we're just trying to make sure that we hit all facets, and especially, too, uh, highlighting our youth and some of the opportunities that they say are not there and what they say are there right now. So uh, we are having a round table table discussion tonight with all these people. Thank you all, first of all, for joining me on this late evening. Uh, right now, just introducing everybody. If you guys can say, say your name, starting with you, Council Member. Sure, Cindy Wynn, Council Member for District E. Okay. Mary Adams Thomas, real estate broker. Stephanie Chambliss, PJ's Coffee, Reed Boulevard. Ronald Walker, retired, uh, currently living in Lake Carmel in the east. Bree Anderson, co-founder of Daughters Beyond Incarceration. Clyde McCoy, resident, New Orleans East, retired. I'm Robert Hand. I have Louisiana Commercial Realty, commercial real estate broker. All right, again, thank you all for joining us so much. We're all obviously passionate about getting um, the East back and wanting to see mm -hmm. some positive changes happen in the East. So, uh, you know, we're just, first of all, I just want to know um, an update on what's going on in the East, starting with you, Council Member Wynn. Like, what progress or updates can you give us tonight? Sure. Well, first of all, thank you for, for doing this series on the East. I know that um, the East has a share of challenges, but I feel very good and the energy is there about moving the district forward. I mean, first of all, since I've been in office, District E, uh, which includes the East, the Low Nine, Lake Catherine, and Fork Pipe, we are an opportunity zone. So when you talk about development, we, you got to talk about incentive. Uh, for our developers. So 80% of our district is an opportunity zone. So I think that's a plus for us. And we have more people at the table wanting to help. I mean, we get calls all the time from people say, how can I, what can I do to help out? And so definitely the energy is there. So in reference to Pacific Project, so we all know that a study was done on the former Six Flags site. And I think everybody's eager to find out about the outcome of the study and to, be, to engage in the, with the consultant who did the study. So you guys come out for September the 5th, Thursday, to Franklin Avenue at 6 p.m. to engage with the consultant that conducted the study. And I really believe that, that once we set the action plan for Six Flag, many other stuff is going to be happening around there. But I can't not give credit to PJs who opened in the East. Stephanie, thank you so much for um, investing into us and you know she believe in the East and then when you talk about development when you talk about investment you want people people that has money if they feel confident that the East is going to be able to give them the return then they're going to invest mm -hmm. if they see that the the area is coming back together and people are working together they're going to come back I really believe that's what Stephanie saw in the East not the fact that she lives in the East already, so it's great <laughs> that we have one of our local, but for her to step up and say, you know what, you know, I've always wanted to do this. I want to be part of the solution. And she put her money where her mouth is at. And so I am very blessed to have Stephanie as a partner at, um, in the East. But not only that, but we have Trico, the first black heavy duty store off of I-10 between Reed and Bullard. Jay is doing really great. So I just spoke to him about four days ago, and he's doing well. And so and AT&T, we, we were embraced with AT&T existing off of Morrison and Bullard. Mm -hmm. They're doing awesome. Mm -hmm. They had their challenge. I think everybody knows that, but they're yeah. doing awesome. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I think with all that, and just at the end of the day, just the spirit of everybody working together, I really believe the East, the L9, Lake Catherine, Fort Pike would be on its path to move forward. Yeah, and I know another thing that a lot of people talked about, you know, and maybe you can elaborate on this, um, <laughs> Council Member, um, in terms of um, blighted properties, mm -hmm. and what are we doing about blighted properties to get rid of those blighted properties? If you could talk about the process, because it's not a quick fix, and I understand, because, you know, we talked to um, Mr. Walker about yep. that. Yeah, um, Mr. Walker and I actually talked about this, too, at PJ's, and yes. I know he, he uh, I want for it, to be resolved as well. But as you know, there is a process that we have to go through. We have a large number of deadbeat property owners. These are people that used to live in our neighborhoods that have moved on. 
And so we are working really hard to basically connect with them. A lot of the information we have at City Hall is not even correct. We sent letters that's been returned mm -hmm. back to City Hall. We're working with the city attorney in reference to how can we turn this property back into commerce? What is Jefferson doing mm -hmm. that they're able to address their blight and we're not mm -hmm. able to address our blight? So, you know, there's a lot of process that needs to be vetted through. We're very committed in making sure that we remove blight. Something that, you know, even before I came here, I was driving around taking pictures a blighted property that we just recently identified. Mm -hmm. And so something that we're still working at it, it's not going to happen overnight, uh, but I'm very committed in making sure that we address all the blighted property. And we have a very close working relationship with the administration. Mayor Cantrell recognizes this is an issue in District E. Yeah. And she's very committed in working with us to address that matter. Well, thank you for addressing that. Another thing I wanted to talk about, uh, we have realtors here yep. too, home ownership um, and just you know helping to build in the East. First of all, Mary and, um, and Robert, what have you guys noticed just on basically being realtors? What have you noticed about the East that um, makes it special and things that you feel like we can improve on in the East? The, the New Orleans East really has a strength in affordable apartments. If you look at uh, all the areas of the city. There is no place anywhere in Orleans or Jefferson Parish where you can go and you can get a two bedroom apartment for 800 a month. The problems that we have are that nobody wants to live in the East because of the crime, uh, the lack of shopping. Uh, but I think what will happen is we'll have city council, we'll have the mayor, we'll have the governor, we'll have our congress men and women and We'll get everybody together on the same page and we'll start to offer some tax incentives. And we saw that on Tulane Avenue in Mid City where those tax in incentives spurred growth in apartments. That brought people back to the area. The result of that was that retail came into the area. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've seen a whole evolution of people coming back to the area, bringing in hotels, bringing in retail. All around the Superdome, that area was just parking lots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The same thing can happen in New Orleans East. If we get these tax incentives, because nothing happens without tax incentives, mm -hmm. we can build affordable apartments, brand mm -hmm. new apartments. The last apartments in the East, were most of them were built in the 1980s, right? Correct. So we have new apartments, we have more rooftops, more people, more population. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and and I can get into a little bit later on about how many blighted properties we have found and, right. um, and how many people rent, but the real strength is the ability of our biggest economic driver, which is hospitality. Mm -hmm. Those people uh, make around 25 to 35,000 a year. They can't afford to live uptown and pay 2,500 a month. Yes. Yeah. It's getting so expensive, you know, especially yeah. down here in this area. But not in New Orleans East. Mm -hmm. It's the last place that you can go, and a single mom with two or three kids can get a nice place to live for 800 a month. Great. That is really what I call our competitive advantage. That's what New Orleans East has that nobody else has. Mm -hmm. And we can build on that by bringing more people in that can take yeah. advantage of that low rent, and that will create the same type of, of result that we've seen on Tulane Avenue and also by the Superdome. Yeah, and Mary, what did you want to add to that? <clears throat> well, first of all, I live in New Orleans East. I've been owning my home since 1995. I've been a resident of New Orleans East. My, my business was birthed in Lower Nine and then moved to New Orleans East. I have been doing residential and commercial real estate in New Orleans East. Um, in 1996, we actually sold the St. Stephen apartment building. We managed that. We managed the um, 9661 Lake Forest headquarter that's not even there anymore. So I have been doing residential and commercial real estate in New Orleans East. Um, it's been a challenge because we don't have the commercial part of it. Mm -hmm. And so when we came back to rebuild, the question was, 
um, retail, the, the commercial was saying, we need the people back. The mm -hmm. people were saying, we need the retail back. Mm -hmm. The question became, is this the egg before the chicken? Mm -hmm. And so what we need them both working together. Mm -hmm. However, because we have a lot of homeowners there, they came back to build their homes. At that time, we only had the corner grocery stores. We didn't even have Walgreens at that time. Mm -hmm. And um, we needed places to live while we were building, rebuilding our houses, and we came, the tax credits came in. Yeah. And they were needed at that time to get some multifamily together mm -hmm. so that we could have somewhere to live. Mm -hmm. Because we had homeowners living in some of those units. Once they finish their homes, they move back in their homes. Um, we have one owner that has seven apartment complexes that he owned in New Orleans East. And before Katrina, he would not even take Section 8 vouchers. Mm. But now that's all he takes is Section 8 voucher. Mm. I have nothing against Section 8 because mm. I do do affordable homes. Mm. But we have people that have invested in New Orleans East live there and need us to get retail back yeah. in the area. Because, you know, we talk yeah. about it all the time. I mean, the, yeah. the people are out there. It's like, what, yeah. 75,000? It's 86,000 uh, 86, now. 86,000. Yeah. yeah. But the discriminator is this. You don't have an effective police department. Mm. The businesses are not going to come in there unless they know that they are safe. Mm -hmm. You mentioned AT&T. Soon as they open, somebody drove through the window. They hit Walgreens. The police arrived five hours later. Mm -hmm. That's unacceptable. Yeah. Bree, I saw you nodding your head too, is that yeah, right? Because I, I agree, and I think yeah. most of the girls in my program, that's that's the way they feel, and even like oh, they Talk about your program, by the way, Daughters Beyond Incarceration, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which is a great thing that you're doing for young girls. Yeah, yeah so um, my organization is led by myself and Dominique. We advocate um, for girls who've been impacted by their father's incarceration, and we hear that a lot because most of our girls are in the East, and we don't really have anywhere to bring them. Like we go to Stephanie, Stephanie place to go yeah. do our work out of PJs, that's our favorite spot. Yeah. But a lot of the girls, they don't feel safe. Like I have some of them texting me in the group before I got here, what you doing tonight? And I'm like, I'm not that age, why they texting me on a Friday? <laughs> because they don't have nothing else to do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the East. Like they yeah. want to be around their neighborhood, but it's nothing yeah. to do. They have a park and it's dark around the house and they don't yeah. feel safe. They're like, we don't yeah. never see police, so we're not going to love. First of all, let me add something to it. District E also contains the lower ninth ward, mm -hmm. which has a multitude of problems. That whole area west, I shall we say east of the Industrial Canal, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. New Orleans East, and I'm very passionate about this, because mm -hmm. not my only myself, but some of my associates, uh, Leon Richard, uh, Vanessa Geringer, and Alicia Plummer, we started a movement to annex New Orleans East from the city of New Orleans proper. New Orleans East has the roadways, it has the byways, it has everything that can be offered to build. But now we've seen so much, as the gentleman said before, corruption and whatever else, we're not getting what we need. Uh, parents having to get up four o'clock in the morning put their kids on a bus yes. to transfer them across the city. The buses have to hit I-10 um, in the high rise. Mm -hmm. If you have an accident on the high rise and you are a heart pa pa patient, forget it, you're gone. Mm -hmm. You have so many minutes to get that person to get the proper medical care. Mm -hmm. As the gentleman said, police department, police response is miserable. Mm -hmm. We need a proactive police department, not to go out there and harass anyone, but to go out there and maintain the law, use yeah. common sense and intelligence, Just be vigilant, and be vigilant yeah. in what we need. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it, that area it compromises from the middle of uh, the twin span all the way to the middle of the high rise. Mm -hmm. We've been getting these promises for years. Taxation, this, we gotta wait for this, we gotta wait for that, yeah. and it takes a process. Yeah. Well, the process has been going on long enough. It's time to stop. Mm -hmm. Monies and taxes that were supposed to come to that region went elsewhere. Yeah. 
Um, Cindy, would you like to respond to that, or, or Stephanie? Mm -hmm. Well, I just wanted to comment on the safety piece, on the safety piece. Mm -hmm. uh, we at, P at PJs, we feel extremely safe mm -hmm. where we are. We have mm -hmm. a very strong police presence. Um, mm -hmm. I do understand the concern mm -hmm. about what happened to AT and T. It was very mm -hmm. um, embarrassing for the business community mm -hmm. because Cindy and I were both at the grand opening yeah. the week uh -huh. before, mm -hmm. and you know, and we're you know discussing how we need businesses to come. I think that we have to have more community involvement mm -hmm. because yeah. somebody knows something. New Orleans mm -hmm. is very small and everybody knows everybody. You know, and for what happened to AT&T, it was very unfortunate. It's my understanding mm -hmm. that, you know, the person that did uh, commit that crime has been arrested. Mm -hmm. um, but in all fairness, I think that NOPD, the 7th District, they're doing the best they can with what mm -hmm. they have. Um, but I, I think that parents should be held more accountable, perhaps. Mm -hmm for their children's actions and I, I just think that the community has to take the community back and be more involved in um, community policing. Yeah. And, and, well, and I can appreciate safe. what you're saying but you live, your, your uh, business is on Reed, right? Yes it is. Where is the 7th District located at? Reed. On Reed. So they have to use that artery where they're hitting us. We had 25 break-ins in two weeks, we never saw a car. When Maybe we come for a car, the day they day. show up the next mm -hmm. day. And see, the station closes at 10 o'clock to all traffic and doesn't reopen to eight in the morning. So you can't walk in. A tourist coming through here, say he gets in trouble, you know, and he says, I Google the 7th District. He can't get in. The doors are locked. Well, you know, See, I live in terrible. New Orleans East. Mm -hmm. I live in Spring Lake on Morrison. I'm not on Reed. Yeah. And I feel pretty safe. Mm -hmm. um, I think where we have the crime, those are pocket areas. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the one thing that I believe that we have to do for New Orleans East when we start talking about commerce, we have to grow from the ground up, inside out. We yeah. need investors like Stephanie mm -hmm. that believes in our community yeah. mm -hmm. and regardless to what she didn't wait for tax credits no. she mm -hmm. came in she put her money in and she opened a store mm -hmm. and her store is very yes. good for the oh, community yes. we go there we support her yeah. I think that's where New Orleans East we're gonna have to go back to grassroots and start from the inside out Mm -hmm. With the crime, yeah. yes, mm -hmm. we do have a problem, but it's pockets. It's, pocket. of, no. it's, it's, it's only no. pockets, and I think it's going to take all of us working together. But when we take small businesses and develop them, that's what grows a community. Mm -hmm. So is there any incentive right now to bring those, uh, bus like like Stephanie, is there any incentive to help bring some smaller bus uh, small businesses and major chains to the east right mm -hmm. now? I mean, it depends on the type of development and the location. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. I know that we've heard it from the small business owners that they're getting access to capital is really challenging. Yeah. And that's something that has been, been a chronic problem. I wish I was a lender. If I was a lender, then that problem would have been resolved. Mm -hmm. So we're working with many of our lenders to educate them or, and, or to learn what are some of the challenges that they face that we could work with our minority small business owners. But we have, and just like Mary mentioned, you know, we have Bro's Pizza, small business owner. Brian started that in the shopping center, doing really mm -hmm. well. We have Matt Chef at the 59 event. We have Cajun Fire nearby mm -hmm. there. We have, um, trying to think, the barbecue Blaze. place. And then Blaze. We, Blaze. Blaze. And we just okay. recently mm -hmm. discovered Mermaid open off of uh, Lake Forest and okay. Crowder that has special, yeah, yeah. they're okay. across from the Upper Room Bible Church in yeah. the in the old it where uh, DMV so used to be at. So yeah. they're yeah. freezing. Yeah. Yeah. And freezing, yeah. yeah. can't stop yeah. 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 right. I, I agree yes. with everything you say in Councilman, but when we went to Slide L at the exit, and when you get off, they got the billboard. When we get off at Bullet, you're going to see New Orleans Seafood and Hamburg. You're going to see a hair salon. You also have a Pet Boys. You have a McDonald's. You have a Wendy's. We, we don't even, and the business people are supposed to buy space on that board. 
We don't know it's there. You okay. mentioned all mm -hmm. these businesses. Well, what, what we're looking we for the is, thing is, yeah, I don't know if you were getting it mixed up in reference to the sign for those businesses. So I think that's a commercial where we could talk to the property owner about yeah. putting those. And, and any property owner would want to advertise their uh, their uh, their. That's what you got to do, Chamber of Commerce. One second, let's get yeah. to Stephanie so, and then we'll yeah. get to Clyde. So i like to comment on the blue signs that you're referring to um, that's off of I-10. Oh. That's actually a state, state sign. sign. Yeah. Um, the yep. Reed billboard is the only one that's full. We're mm -hmm. actually on a waiting list and we are hoping that some um, legislators could get involved to help us get an additional billboard mm -hmm. because when you go um, to other places such as across the lake, they have multiple billboards. So, to, um, so to comment, there there may be like three slots for food and then three for hotels, hotels and then that's it. That that's a state issue yeah. and we have to go through um, the Department of Transportation agree. for that. But another bigger problem we have, we've never had a town hall meeting with Councilman, uh, Congress Richmond, mm -hmm. nor uh, Cassidy. Have you reached None. out to them? Or oh, I call the office. They say we have satellites out there in the east. Mm. They haven't been. When we had that tornado to hit those homes about three years ago. On Chef. Yeah, on Chef. Mm -hmm. It took Cassidy three weeks to get out there along mm -hmm. with Richmond. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is ridiculous. We don't have town hall meetings. The council person, I agree, can't do it all. But we don't have the support of our politicians, you know, um, and that's sad. Hi. I appreciate Stephanie. I'm a retired law enforcement officer from the federal, state, and local level. I mm. retired federal. I appreciate where you are at on Reed. Coffee and donuts go hand in hand with law enforcement, <laughs> okay? Mm. <laughs> really, believe me. The gentleman is saying that we need national outlets, national change to come into this area. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it, it's, it's really kind of, should we say, incredible to have a city, and New Orleans East is a city within itself, over 80,000, larger than Lake Charles. We got one purported hospital, if it is a hospital, because when you have to take an individual and have an emergency vehicle take them downtown for them to get the proper care. Yeah. We have so much potential in this community that we need to grow it. And it's got, it won't get grown by the mom and pop's jobs. That's the basis. But we need national organizations to come in here. Now we're talking about expenditures and taxes and getting monies in it. And now we're in the, in the fears of a recession. So first thing that goes, whatever money's that additional that we get, we're going to see those fly away mm. before long. Yeah. But at this stage of the game, we've got to have those proponents to, and those mm. people to come in and say, hey, we're going to do this. Well, yeah. so, so, Clyde, well let me okay. ask, and yeah. I ask mm -hmm. Clyde, so, I'm just, so what can we do, in your opinion, to entice them? Because I believe that PJ's is a national brand. Yeah. I believe that I eventually mm -hmm. Bro Pizza will be a national brand, even mm -hmm. though we started small. Yeah. I believe that Matt Chef can be a national brand. So, so the concept mm -hmm. for me is where Already I'm not going to wait for the national guys to come Already in right. when, when yeah. there's mm -hmm. people yeah, like right, Stephanie right, right, I understand. Here, All of that is taken into consideration. Into but, but we still need we'll, a place to go. If this gentleman wants to go shop for a uh, suit, suit we'll, a decent or shoes, shoes, or shoes, we've got to go oh, out of the parish or oh, way downtown to get something of a decent a case, car. But we're not it saying that we don't need those things. We're saying that let's work with what we have. Mm -hmm. now, That's what we we're have, doing. We, I'm we, quite sure we we're have, doing. We have partnered. Oh, one at a time, one at a time, guys. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Mary. We <laughs> have partnered with Southern University Small Business Incubator so that we can begin to help our small businesses mm -hmm. that needs to get money to expand. Mm -hmm. We They may be now in the storefront, but they may be at a place where now they can get a building, a freestanding building on their own. We're not saying that is the whole solution. Let's just work with what we have in our hands as we attract other national retails. When they see us thriving with our small business, right. they come in yeah. and then they want to mm -hmm. buy them up. 
Mm, so, that is so Stephanie, can you share with us how you're doing business why at PJs? So yeah. business is, is very well, it's going very yeah. well at PJs. And I understand your frustration and I understand yours. And, and I'll tell you all, it has not been an easy road mm -hmm. for us mm -hmm. to even get the doors open. I this project that, has yeah. been um, in, you know, in the works for over two years. Mm -hmm. But what I will say is mm -hmm. that I don't think that we should wait for other people no, to we're, come we're in. No, we're not asking to wait. We're, we're asking, we're asking this administration, administration. this council person, person, get there and get to these sources and let yeah. them know we're ready and willing and able. Okay. And, 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 and Cindy is doing that. I yeah. think she's working yeah. to do that. I think they're working to do that. Think about what your it. concentration is. is. You're talking about food. Well, clothing. Well, no, we're See, no, well, we well, just bought it. We just bought it. There are many components to the whole deal. And also, I also want, I don't want Bree to get lost because I always want to hear what young people want. Bree, what do you think about it? Um, I love the East. I was living in the East before Katrina, and I live in the East now. Well, my parents live, my mom live in the east, I live in Miss You. And I will go list, um, to fundraise and get a home, like a DBI safe house in the east. Mm -hmm. We want yeah. our DBI home to start in the east. So I agree with the small businesses. Yeah, well, we, we, we do, and but yeah. we also got to look at infrastructure. Yeah. Okay, at this stage of the game, we're talking about putting more houses in certain areas, areas. what have you. Mm -hmm. We have a failing infrastructure. Mm -hmm in other parts of the city. Mm -hmm. And now our infrastructure, when you start putting that many people into a certain area, mm -hmm. it's going to impact mm -hmm. <laughs> areas that we never even begin to think of. Now, to be fair, you know, they've had some road yes. infrastructure projects. Yes, yes I know they did come true. Yes, 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 that, 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 that is day. true. Yeah. Yeah. But the woods. when you start putting more and more people and you densely pack these people, that is a drain mm. on the current resources that you have. Yeah. So you got to plan way beyond right. that. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's not just me. I think I'm echoing mm -hmm. the sentiment of a lot of homeowners mm -hmm. in New Orleans East. Yeah. Lady, uh, the lady just educated me on when they say affordable housing. Yeah. You're going to put what? Uh, the average, let's say 1,400 square foot house. Mm -hmm. In New Orleans East, it's not. It's going to be expensive. About a hundred thousand. No, but like a, no, 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 like a no. hundred and seventy, from one forty-nine to one seventy-five. Okay. That's not for most people affordable. Okay. Agreed. That's not. I don't care where you go in the but United States. I think that's States. where you have your soft second um, incentive money from fi uh, from the finance authority. But so there's different incentive that the city is bringing to the table to get people yeah. to become first time home buyer. Yes. Yeah, if you can explain so that for, for the people at home to understand, like yeah. what kind of incentive, like what kind of things? So can detail them. I definitely don't want to like represent FANO, uh -huh. but for more information about the soft second program, about low interest rate to finance your mortgage, you know, you want to reach out to FANO, which is the finance of, the, uh, of New Orleans, as well as many home buyer education programs that could mm -hmm. plug you into those resources. Right. But we recognize that affordability, it's much, it has to be mm -hmm. lower because the income hasn't really went up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the city recognizes that. And that's all, that. all across the city. And, 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 and keep in mind, the mayor just did a housing tour yeah. in the East two yes, nights did. ago. So mm -hmm. if you were at the Greater St. Stephen. I was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you receive information about what programs that the city has used their CDBG money to you know, to make yeah. sure that there's more home ownership in the east you see that's okay. that that's when we say home ownership affordability we're yeah. talking i'm not trying to be out of the way yeah there no, are some for financially some people are not financially able just to do yeah what they, what they want and then they, they can't get the money money okay yeah. this has been a major problem uh -huh from day one. Mm -hmm. The hoops mm -hmm. that individuals have to jump, mm -hmm. like you said, jump through just yeah. to get the financing. They I, may have had I, one click on their yeah. credit. Yeah. And, let me, let me say this, and this is my area. I actually have a right. home by your counseling mm -hmm. agency. Okay. Um, as far as the money available for assistance to, to help buy homes, it's out there. Mm -hmm. We are working with home buyers to improve their credit scores because now the credit scores has gone up to 640 mm -hmm. to 620 to get assistance. Mm -hmm. You can get finance with a 580 score. Mm -hmm. 
However, to get the assistant, you need to get the 620. With the education, the home buyers education program, mm -hmm. we're getting people into those programs in three to six months. They're getting their credit mm -hmm. scores up and then they're getting the assistance. Mary, how long okay. has that program been in, in place and do you have any like upcoming events or anything that mm -hmm. like that? So for people mm -hmm. who are just hearing this for the first Perfect. time, the, one, one second round, like, just yeah. in case people at home are interested in that. Yes. The program has been in place. Louisiana Housing Corporation has had it in place for a long time. We have classes coming up. You can go to or you can call us at 504-382-0909. We can tell you when the next class. We have partnered with Southern University and starting in October, we will start doing financial literacy classes every mm -hmm. Saturday to help those who want to become homeowners. For instance, it is said that we have the largest Section 8 vouchers mm -hmm. in the city mm -hmm. with our multifamily. Mm -hmm. Okay, if we do, the Orleans Parish uh, um, Housing Authority has a home ownership program for their Section 8 mm -hmm. tenants. Mm -hmm. If they have that program, let's take some of those homeowners because they work. Okay. Let's take some of those homeowners and, and those Section 8 vouchers and make them homeowners. So we have a program now. We actually have an lunch and learn on September the 6th at the Board of Realtors so that we now can start educating the realtors on these programs for Orleans Parish, Jefferson Parish, St. Tammany Parish, mm. and we're working with St. Bernard Parish with right. even getting them a program so now we can take Section 8 tenants and convert them to homeowners. So they okay. can use that okay. Section 8 voucher yes. yes. toward homeowners. One yes. thing that you're, yeah. living, you're leaving out you may qualify. I just renewed my insurance on my property. They don't go by claims, they go by zip codes Oops. now. And see, my insurance went up a thousand dollars. So if you get somebody in the home, yeah, they can make the payment and maybe they can get it incorporated into the note, but it's gonna go up. See, but that's and how that's they what's killing. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, that's yeah. what's killing us. Then you got the city with the property tax. See, and when you start doing this kind of stuff, off the top, you're killing these young people that will qualify because they won't be able to stay in the Mary, home. Mary, you're shaking. You're shaking. I, 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 I totally dis disagree with that. Let me tell you. Do you, you teach what, about sustainability? Yes, yeah, sustainability. Okay. So we do pre-counseling and post-counseling. So we're going to uh -huh. counsel you before you get in there, and then we're going to counsel you after you get in there okay. to maintain it for su sustainability. But the one thing, uh, the reason I'm shaking my head, it's because that age group between 25 and 40 years old, mm -hmm. those are the, the ones that we really need in New Orleans East. Mm -hmm. Because while we do love our elderly people, mm -hmm. we love you yeah. guys, but for the East to continue to grow and to stay alive, yeah. we need the people that, like your news reporter who said, yeah. she's from New Orleans East. Mm -hmm. We yeah. need her to come move Bree, back. She's 26. <laughs> we, we, well, she's in New Orleans East, yeah. but we need mm -hmm. your news reporter and your program director. <laughs> we, need, from the we, East, yeah. we need them to come move back in mm -hmm. New Orleans East. So right now, we're looking at a program that we're going to target people between the ages of 25 and 40 mm, yeah. to come back to New Orleans East and tell us what will it take for them to come back to New Orleans East Safety. because that's what's going to grow. That's what's going to grow up. You need the infrastructure. And, and when you, I think something that should be far to explain, when you start saying Section 8 and a lot of folks get squirmy, they get mm -hmm. scared, okay? Because prior to Katrina, there was a big conversation about Section 8 and all the apartment complexes. And folks said, no, we were, because the majority of the Section 8 vouchers were in New Orleans East. It was causing the problems. It was saturated. Uh, absent homeowners to mm -hmm. crime and whatever else. Mm -hmm. Absent, shall I say, landlords yeah. who had all these big complexes. Yes. And just 
abandoned. People living in conditions that mm -hmm. were so squalor. Because they squalor. had finished their tax credit combines right, right. and they and, abandoned it. And, and they abandoned it. So now we need, when you start talking about home ownership, we need to have that infrastructure. That develop. It's a whole program. Mm -hmm. It's not just one mix. Right. It's a totality of items that have to come together. So, so you you yeah, I just want to make comments. So on the infrastructure, I know this administration is working really hard. And as you guys know that there is proposition on the ballot in November to help with the infrastructure. So one is the 6.75% sales tax on uh, short-term rentals. So this is not a tax on you. And as you talk about, Clyde, about growing our infrastructure, mm -hmm. this is a part of a solution or strategy because we don't have sufficient revenue to address the deporting condition of our infrastructure. We are a 300-year-old city. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, but we're very blessed in well, many ways in, way, in, in the New East, Orleans East, yeah, because yes. we have a more Correct. modern infrastructure. Correct. But right. even that is being put but, to task at this moment. Correct. North but, of I-10, they're beginning to show flooding. But let's what we have, right. and this is, you know, right. and let's clap right. on that. Well, we, so we are growing that. So on the second thing I wanted to mention about deadbeat property owner, we are working on a rental registry. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so what a rental registry consists of is is making sure that every rental property is registered with the city to address the fact that we've seen on the news where people have lived live in deplorable condition, mm -hmm. molded yeah. uh, apartment, being evicted because yeah. the landlord refused to fix the property and then the tenant refused to pay. And mm -hmm. so we're working on that. So ish, when we have issue, for me, it's always about coming up with a solution. Yes. You yeah. know, and yeah, well, this administration, I have to say, are addressing many of the issues that we have inherited when we came in last year. Okay, and we're yeah. working on it. It's not going to happen overnight. No, it's not. But it's I know time. that it's moving well, one thing, very it, positively. There, there, there's, there, there's some blighted, when you talk about blighted housing, what about the blighted lots? Yeah. You go down, there, there are two, I see, Chef Mentor and uh, Bullet overgrown lots and what have you. Then you go down Lake Forest Boulevard before you hit Reed. That mm -hmm. high rise used to yeah, be. Yeah, that was Caveman Hotel. Cave, that, yeah, that's, what, that's what you call yeah, And then, yeah, the, yeah, and then that acreage, that, co that acreage that's next door to it. Is Which bad. one, Reed is and Lake Forest? Can that's I, correct. Can I share with you my experience with blighted property? Yes, please. Um, blighted, uh, we, we're talking blighted com commercial. lots, commercial lots, or whatever. Those acreage. Are we, we have some, uh, we have zoning codes now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, and 75,000 people that live in the east, there's 27,000 households. About 14,000 of those are property owners, mm -hmm. homeowners, the other 12,000 rent. That's a little over 50%. That's a huge number of people who are renting. Uh, those people would be future tenants in new apartments, which I think comes before the PJs. I think for more PJs to come in, you have to have more people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, but those are also future home buyers, right? Home buyers come from people who rent apartments. We have we have enough right there. We need to make those home buyers, right. and yeah. then we can move to more in those once yeah. we move them into housing. So we just have a little different perspective. Yeah. We we're, we're saying the same thing, but I think our timing of doing it is is mm -hmm. different. We have a lot of multifamily right now. The, the, the vouchers that we have there now, our thoughts are when we talk about small investors because we don't have the tax incentive to bring the larger ones, yeah. we can take our small investors to buy those vacant lots and build homes and we mm -hmm. can take those Section 8 vouchers out of those multifamily units mm -hmm. and we can move some more in. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I don't think that we should build more multifamilies. We should move out the ones that we have there into home ownership, mm -hmm. and then we can move more people in those units. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of multifamilies already. We need more home ownership so that we can continue mm -hmm. to build a better tax base. base. Right. So, right. so of the 14,000 homeowners we've got now and then the 12,000 uh, rent. households that rent, rent. the leftover is 6,000 blighted properties mm -hmm. versus about 2,000 blighted properties uh, 15 years ago. So what I wanted to share was my experience with blighted properties. Okay. 
So with the vacant lots, overgrown grass, it's a code violation. Mm -hmm. The planning department comes out, they, they check it out. Somebody will physically come and look at that lot, <laughs> and they'll write them up, and they'll, <laughs> and they'll find them. Okay. Yeah. They, they've done that. You know what I'm talking about? No, yeah. Yeah. Done that. So where's the dead end? Where does it stop? So it stops with the judge. judge. All these fines get accumulated against the property owner. The property owner goes before the court. He gets a pro bono attorney. And the judge says, well, I don't want to take anybody's property away, so I'm going to wipe out this $6,000 I'm going to wipe out $6, in fines that the city has taken a year to accumulate. Okay. I have a property in my neighborhood that had 30 code violations over the last eight years, and that's what happened. He went before Judge Bruno. Judge says, I don't want anybody to lose their house. He wiped out all the fines. There's no incentive for somebody to fix up a blighted property, but it's not the city that's the problem, it's the judge. Um, How do you fix something like that? I um, don't know. You have to well, appeal, you have to appeal. take it to federal court. <laughs> so you have to go <laughs> to the <laughs> federal court. They won't be bothered with that. Oh, I can tell I, you that. Well, well yeah. it, they'll be bothered with it. Well, look, look, Katrina happened how many years ago? I would 14 say years 14, 14, 14 years now. 14 years yeah. from next week. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Correct. Now, look at the ease. Look at the lots that you just mentioned mm -hmm. along the Ad 10 service road. We have 18 wheelers that are establishing truck, truck stops. stops. We just okay. resolved that so yesterday. So, yeah, well, and you say, oh no, they <laughs> still I'm park it. I know, but I'm Tell ticketing them. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm okay. ticketing them. Okay, they All right. need to be, But it's going to take time, Mr. Walker. It's well, going to take, but yeah, I just... But you know how you, a quick relief is? UPS has a truck break down. They send a heavy tow truck and pick it up. The city can lease and do the same thing. Once you start towing those trucks, I hear you. It's I hear over. You. Yeah, I hear you. And no. we are working. We got the sign up. We've ticket them already. It's going to take a minute. I recognize that they're going to try to park there to kind of see if we're really watching. Oh, yeah. And we are watching. And Before I came here, fuel? I drove by Morrison and, and that area. There was mm -hmm. two trucks out there. Yeah. We've already put two tickets up there already. Okay. So I'm cautiously optimistic. I was at the meeting Wednesday. Okay. And the mayor has gone to all is going to all the districts. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. She did mention about accountability and what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. Seeing is believing. It's time for some action. Okay. Because yeah. you can go drive an I-10 East. You turn and look to your right. You see the two. Yeah. To uh, eighteen wheelers. But you guys, you gotta realize that we don't we don't tell them to park there. No, no, no. We it's have not that people you that are really irresponsible. No. We can't watch where well, Mary's gonna park her I semi told, truck and follow her. I totally her. agree with <laughs> so, you, Councilman <laughs> Wynn. Go to seventy seven forty, I ten Service Road South. Is a big red truck. Right next to the apartment, <laughs> bag up in there. That's correct. Yeah, he's there all, all the, the time. time. And you know what I was told? Oh, that's because so and so, they're not going to touch so that. So he's probably yeah. on the, what, a residential area? Yes. Yes. One of the apartments, he's tearing up okay. the street. They just who repaired. owns that property? Who, I have no what, idea. It's it's apartments. When you see stuff like that, Take a picture. I have. Text it to me. Give me the address. I and give then it. I, I'm giving it to your people. Okay. okay. So you know the next. You know what? I, I think we I also have to. One. I think we also have to look at. Apparently, there's a problem. There's someone that's living in that community mm -hmm. that's driving that 18 wheeler mm -hmm. right right that wants to go home but cannot park. Maybe mm -hmm. we need to look at a parking spot we, for I have them. No. Maybe. I did. I did. You so there's two I'm, of them. Yeah. Well, so I've actually uh, was it Greater Grace Fellows off of Crowder. So they own a commercial lot in the back of the church. Yeah. Okay. And but so we've actually, before we started this, was uh, we were dealing with bus drivers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We actually there's about five or six at Rosedale. There's about six at Bunker Hill. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually went there and said, listen, guys, you guys cannot park in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I have no places to park. I said, okay, I can work on it. Yeah. We yeah. went and identified location, cool. talked to the pastor. Okay. The pastor's like, I'll yeah. be happy for them to, they could rent out my space, mm -hmm. just go in there and park. But mm -hmm. they don't want to pay. Councilman Wynn, you have two places 
the Palace the Truck Palace Stop, truck shop, yeah, also Legion Fields. Fields. The reason they don't want to do that because they can walk over to their house. Yeah. You see, have, forget I that. Okay. We shouldn't yeah. even go to because what about OSHA when they burn a diesel and the fumes? Mm -hmm. People, you know, that's wrong. Then it takes well, down your property. Well, we did that as a way of really helping our small because we recognize mm -hmm. that those that drive semi trucks are basically your small business owner. Mm -hmm. They're no. independent driver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that so takes your tax base takes because they have to pay tax. The parking, you know, the parking well, we, fees are hundred dollars a for month. Me is, One second, Mr. Walker. Yeah. Go, yeah. go ahead. For yeah. me, is Mr. Walker, is that for those that has been doing wrong or has been shady in our communities, for us to educate them mm -hmm. and to help them. Show them a little bit love. I am not in the business of shutting down anybody. I'm not in the business of trying to get anybody out of the community. I want people to be able to live in our community. I don't care if you're tall, short, whatever. Okay. But if their lack of information, and we have the resources, we have the knowledge and understanding, why won't we help them so they could do it right? So they could okay. be functioning Correct. citizens mm -hmm. In Correct. our community, in yeah. our in our city, yeah, but all that's fine and well. well but it's they, fine and well. They know the law. The they know oh, what the no, standards are. Go ahead, go ahead. They know what the standards are. Mm -hmm. If they drive an eighteen wheeler, they've gone through all sorts of tests. Mm -hmm. They know what the ICC commission says mm -hmm. and whatever have you. And as a if, as a former state trooper, they know that. Uh -huh. I know that they know. If you're driving that big rig, you know you got to have so much insurance. Those vehicles are are very expensive to maintain and to operate. Okay, so mm -hmm. I appreciate your compassion, but these are not children. Mm -hmm. We're not dealing with you, are dealing with adults. Mm -hmm. And this mm -hmm. thing of sitting here and saying that, oh, we, we're gonna help them do this, we're gonna, look, let's get down to the nitty gritty. You cannot go in any other state hey. and do what some folks do here. That's they come to New Orleans. Okay, but, but, but we're now addressing it, so we put the let's, time. Give it, okay. let's, yeah. let's give it some time to work and see what, okay. what works okay. with yeah. it. So I think you guys have to, I, I, I can understand it's been 14 years. Mm -hmm. I know that you're frustrated. I live in New Orleans East, mm -hmm. I feel you. But I think what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to look at what's our solution okay. and let's try to work mm -hmm. with it. Okay. Our council lady say, look, we addressing it. We gave them the notice. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens. Okay. All right, well, no, one second. What, Just because, yeah. what was it, Ms. Warren? No, 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 wait, wait. Well, wait, we got five minutes. So okay. <laughs> what I want us to do is just we'll go around one more time and okay. just talk about what we want the future to look like very briefly, yeah. okay. <laughs> very briefly. But just, you know, what you feel like uh, is doing what we're doing right now, right now, and then what you want or envision for the future. Um, we'll go this. We'll go this way since we started right. this way. We'll go That's this fine. way. <laughs> Starting with you, sir. Go ahead. You know, my vision for the future is. You talked a little bit about infrastructure. Mm -hmm. um, I think there are very specific things that government can do to help. I think the solution to New Orleans East is to to bring more people in. Part of the problem is the average income is 17,000 a year. Mm -hmm. So we have 75,000 people, but we don't have enough disposable income. So I'd like to see more people, more rooftops, and that would bring in more businesses. Mm -hmm. um, the data center did a really interesting study on um, wh where people work who make 25 to 35,000 a year. And most of them are downtown, they're single French moms water. with two or three Cooking kids. I, would, I think those people that work in the, our economic drivers, now the hospitality industry, mm -hmm. so hotels, restaurants, mm -hmm. those workers, I think, could move to New Orleans East. They could afford the 800 a month apartment. Mm -hmm. But I think what's missing is a bus service, a direct bus service from Lowe's or, or uh, no, Walmart. Buses. Mm -hmm. Direct to the casino, where which employs about three thousand people, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Du I'll direct to, to some, about that direct yeah. to some of the hotels to help people out who live in the New Orleans East. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, right? we got to keep going sure. around. So, <laughs> all right, Mr. Clyde, what do you think? New Orleans East is not a dumping ground for mm -hmm. folks who are less able, less mm -hmm. financially able. If you're going to spread the wealth, spread it all over the city or yeah. parish of Orleans. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we've got yeah. properties out there that could be exploited 
and made to produce. You got the Six Flags, Disney's, my associate approached Disney on that. They would have gladly come. You got uh, Lincoln Beach, a historical site that you could manufacture and bring up to par. Yeah. I see, my vision mm -hmm. is I see that I'm site at uh, Lincoln Beach, high rise condos, uh, a monorail system, system coming there that goes from downtown New Orleans all the way to uh, the Gulf Coast. Coast. The mm -hmm. Things of this nature. Mm -hmm. These are things that we, we, we exploited and looked at. Take yeah. that land and let's make something viable. Let's yeah. not say we're gonna have people uh, working downtown and we're gonna bust them back to New Orleans mm -hmm. East. Mm -hmm. no. we, that's not a dumping ground. We, that's not how you address this problem. Right. That's not how we fix this problem. And I appreciate your concern, sir. But well, we're not this dumping is not anybody. Oh, we we what we're doing is, we're doing is no, no, but that, that's the impression. We're looking at people who wait, wait. One minute, guys. Okay, are working okay. downtown. We gotta keep going. We gotta keep going. We gotta keep going. Okay. All right, Bree. <laughs> yeah. What do you say? <laughs> kind of confusing. <laughs> <laughs> what I envisioned the East being, um, honestly, being a young person in the East, I see a lot of businesses coming up in the East. Um, I have a few friends that have business in the East, and you named a few of them, like Mad Chef, mm -hmm. Stephanie, um, they have Queendom, et cetera. It's like a lot of people that I know my age are starting to move to the East, so mm -hmm. I see it growing in a few years, and that's what I want to see small businesses grow. All right. What, what I want is a safe East. We got to get a credible police department. We got to get a credible school system because businesses are not going to come in here, major corporations, if your school system is failing. Yeah. And we have had enough of negative publicity. Mm -hmm. So my primary is police, and we need a changing of the guard in the seven districts. Stephanie? Okay, so um, I wanted to say that my data and the data I received from PJs before we opened was that the population in New Orleans East was in excess of 80,000. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the exact number, um, but I know that it was over 80,000. I think that uh, safety, education, infrastructure, and affordable living are issues across the city of New Orleans, mm -hmm. not just um, New Orleans East. Mm -hmm. I think that we should plan our town hall meeting and invite mm -hmm. our elected mm -hmm. officials and whether or not they show up. I think we could still move forward with it. Mm -hmm. And I think that there are plenty of people who live in New Orleans East that have the ability to open some national businesses here. And, you know, I'm just a believer in don't stand and wait for other people. The community mm -hmm. could get together. Very resourceful people in New Orleans yes. East and yep. bring some businesses back mm -hmm. to New Orleans East. And that's where I am with that. Thanks, Stephanie. Mary? Well, while we're in real estate, we kind of see it a little bit different. And... I, I live in New Orleans East. Yes, we do need more rooftops, but we don't need mo more rooftops for the people who are working in the hospitality business. I think that we need more affordable homes in the city so that those people can walk to work or ride their bikes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's something we need to address. For New Orleans East, I believe that we need to continue to help our small businesses mm -hmm. to grow, to work with our elected official as they work to um, attract large businesses and get tax incentive for us. We need to look at the affordable housing and the people that we have there in those multifamily units, put them into houses and then bring in more people then. I don't like the idea of maybe building more multifamilies unless it's market rate units. Yeah, and when I say market rates, we want to attract the young professionals. professionals so we can take a building and make it mixed use, mm -hmm. put, put uh, commercial at the bottom, make the, the second through the fourth floor market rate apartments because I do know people that will move back to New Orleans East if they have a better choice. Yeah. Thank you, Mary. And last but not least. Okay, so just a we, they're not doing multifamily anymore, so any development that we do is all mixed use now. It's commercial with mixed use of market rent, affordability, and working credit. And so with all that, um, I personally want to thank everybody for your feedback and thoughts. Uh, I took many a lot away and I just want you guys to know that we're very committed 
in working to moving the district forward. Uh, I agree with all of them, but at the end of the day, my vision for District E is where family comes first. And I think all of us talked about all of those aspects, and I just wanted to summarize it. I'm gonna continue to focus on putting family first, or making sure that we create job opportunity, bring development in, cleaning up our blighted, improving the quality of life. And Mayor is correct, crime is happening everywhere mm -hmm. in the city of New Orleans. And yes, District E has its share, but we also are the largest district yeah. Agreed. in the city of New Orleans. So things could be happening on one end of District E, right. or maybe on the other borderline of Shep, which is still considered the East, mm -hmm. but we get the stigma. So with that, Ms. Jackman, thank you so yes. much for doing this. I thank appreciate you. Yeah. you. Thank and, you very and, much. And, oh, thank you. Appreciate and I just wanted this to be the, the, the start. You know, obviously it was like four part series, it took yeah. a couple of mm -hmm. months, but you know, yeah. hopefully this will be the start of some more to come. And yep. like you said, the lower ninth too, you know, yeah. different, different, different areas of town yep. we can maybe highlight you know, once a couple of every month, you that know? Would be great. Yeah, so thank you all again for joining me. I love all the ideas. <laughs> yeah, and just, know. You know, and it, it was really great. So yep. again, the last part, which includes Stephanie, um, airs tonight and Mary, uh, tonight at 10. Mm -hmm. uh, the Forgotten East, last series starts tonight at 10. So guys at home, please make sure you watch. And uh, thank you all for joining us and thank you guys. Thank, right. you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>